Welcome gamers to the sixth installment of 30 plus build projects for survival Minecraft. This time around we've got some more useful builds like a super smelter design, automatic sugarcane farm design, modular house walls and more. Also a lot of these builds are available to download over on my Patreon so if that interests you be sure to go check that out. Alright without wasting any more time let's get into the first build. Alright so firstly starting off we have my ultimate super smelter design and I will just quickly say this does have a full tutorial video on my channel so be sure to check that out if you want to build this for yourself. So the super smelter is actually encased in a really cool kind of house style build. And yeah, a cool feature with this super smelter is it's actually two built into one build. So we've got the left side here, which is its own individual super smelter, and then the right side as well. As you can see, we have some chests here on the left side. This is the fuel input, and then the item input, and then this is the output chest here. And we can head on inside and take a look at the interior. So on the left side here, we have both of our hoppers that go back and forth between all of the furnaces, and then all of our output hoppers underneath the furnaces here go all the way down to our chest. Next up, we're taking a look at four different unique bridge designs. The first one here being a medieval theme. And what makes this one unique is that we actually have some doors underneath here that kind of lead between each side. Now, as you can see, the backside isn't created because I am lazy. Uh, but yeah, you get the general idea. This is obviously meant to uh, go down to here and there's meant to be a door here as well. But yeah, the whole idea behind this bridge is it's just a normal bridge up above. And then we also have the kind of pass through things down below. And you can also sail underneath it as well with a boat. Next up, we've got the natural bridge. Bridge. This one's pretty cool. It's entirely made out of dirt and grass. So we've got some moss and stone around the place as well. And we've just created like an arch over the river here. You can also, once again, sail underneath this one and you've got a pretty cool view as well. You've got some rooted dirt, some dripstone, and also some glowberries hanging down as well. We've got some leaves, azaleas around the place, and a couple custom little mini trees as well. Next up, we've got the overgrown bridge. So this one utilizes a whole bunch of leaves to make it look kind of overgrown. Even though it's not really overgrown, it's more so meant to be like the design, I guess. But yeah, so we've got leaves on the handrails here. We've got pot plants as well and then we've got leaves in the roof and it just feels really nice walking through this bridge especially with the germs better leaves add-on which i highly recommend using it makes the leaves nice and bushy right now onto the last unique bridge and this one is probably the most unique bridge i've ever made and it's actually an underwater bridge which is uh a little bit impractical but it looks cool so as you can see on the left and right side here we have our entrances and these go down obviously underwater we've got a nice view out into the water as well and then we can of course just head up on this side and yeah you can sail over it instead of under it this time and yeah it just looks really cool Cool, especially for like a futuristic setting. Maybe if you change the wood to like stone or iron blocks or quartz or something like that, it would look really cool in like a kind of futuristic style as well. Next up, we've got the giant industrial crop farm. And this one is definitely just a really cool idea for having like some massive crop fields that you want to create. You don't necessarily have to have like this industrial theme to it, but it makes it look really cool. And uh, once we get closer, you can kind of see there's uh, not too many details I put into this build as it took long enough creating it. So there's not too many details in here, but over the back here, these are meant to be like some solar panels. Then we've got some silos and a couple of warehouses as well. And then of course we have our giant crop fields. Now to add some extra detail to this, I'd put like maybe some wheelbarrows around the place, maybe some tractor designs, and maybe make the warehouses look a little bit more interesting than this and not just uh, completely empty and unfinished entirely. <laughs> Next up, we have my fully automatic sugarcane farm. And similar to my super smelter design, this one's actually two like kind of mechanisms mirrored on either side and it's joined into one building. So as you can see, if we head through the door, we have a minecart hopper that constantly goes back and forwards between both sides and collects all of the harvested sugarcane and deposits it into this chest here. As you can see, we've also got some bamboo in here because I was testing and actually does work with bamboo as well, which is pretty cool. And yeah, so similar to the super smelter design, it is basically just a basic sugarcane farm design and it's been encased in a a pretty cool looking build. This was made quite a while ago, so it is a little bit over detailed in my opinion. Like there is way too many trapdoors and signs on the back of this thing and on the sides. Like I would honestly replace these ones with some signs or even just completely omit the signs entirely. But yeah, once again, you can find the tutorial to this on my channel if you want to build it for yourself. I will just quickly note as well, we also have another design over here and this one actually uses water. It pushes the sugar canes out into the water and into the chest down here. Next up, we're taking a look at a wooden bridge. And the cool thing about this design is it actually has two variations. It has the pristine one that you're looking at here and a ruined one that we'll get to in just a second. Now, as you can see, this one is kind of just like floating in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you're gonna have to forgive me for that. The next one is in the original position that this one was supposed to be in. But yeah, so this bridge design is actually really cool. We've got a different design in every single section. As you can see on the left side here, we've got like some wider kind of windows. Then it goes to a smaller one. And then in the middle, we've just got like the arch with no windows because it couldn't really fit in there. And similar to the unique medieval bridge, we also have like this pass through here. Well, I mean, it's meant to go through once again. <laughs> Don't worry about that. All right, and here's the ruined variation of the bridge. So this one's as if it's been kind of war-torn. Uh, you might be able to see the pristine one over there. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, this one has like a giant gap in the center that you can actually still jump across, which means this bridge is still completely 
reusable. It's just like kind of a design aesthetic, I guess. Yeah, so we've just added a whole bunch of more leaves around the place, a whole bunch of vines as well. Even the boat down here has been destroyed as well. And yeah, it's just two cool kind of versions of uh, the same build. Next up, we have a riverside based design. And similar to the previous one, this one actually comes in a pristine and ruined variant. And uh, if I take a step back, you might be able to notice that this build, once again, is uh, kind of not in the right spot like the last build. Uh, just don't really worry about it. The next one's in the right spot. But yeah, so this is meant to obviously be a river here. And then we have like this nice little base with a dock. And then we also have a farm that sprawls across the right side with a pathway down the center as well. It's obviously meant to be a door here and the whole house isn't really finished because once again, I'm a lazy, absolute piece of shit. Uh, so just imagine that's an actual house. And yeah, so we've got like two separate crop fields on either side. We've got like a nice wheelbarrow design, a couple of decorations around the place and like this little composter kind of station thing. I did not mean to destroy that, whoopsie daisy. And yeah, so now let's go take a look at the ruined version. Okay, so here we are at the ruined version. So obviously the house is uh, completely destroyed here and we've got something that I really like doing in a lot of my ruined kind of builds is adding a little campsite inside of it with a campfire. Just makes it look like someone has kind of moved in here after the fact and is living out of this shell of a house. Now to get this looking ruined, we've added a whole bunch of details around the place. We've added grass and tall grass in between all of the crops and stuff, which is a really nice effect. This is probably one of my favorite ruined effects to add to like a crop field. Just sprinkling in grass and ferns around the place. It just really gives it a really cool look. And yeah, this is probably one of my favorite ruined builds that I've ever made. I just really love the crop farm and how like awesome this looks. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of smelting wall designs. These are obviously meant to be kind of inside of your base on the walls and it's like meant to be your smelting area, of course. And so we've got four designs. We've got two aesthetic ones and two efficient ones. This first one that we're looking at here is the more aesthetic one. As you can see, we've got less furnaces and we've got more room for adding in some nice aesthetics. Like we've got bookshelves back here. We've got a couple of armor stand displays, a couple of more decorations on top of here. And uh, yeah, for the second aesthetic smelting design, we've got leaves on the sides this time. Our barrels are also down below and we've got some up the top here with this cool looking design. Now onto the two more efficient designs that are still pretty aesthetically pleasing. So this one, we've got like a more vertical kind of furnace setup, I guess. We've also got our armor stand displays and a couple of barrels as well. And now onto the final design, we have the most efficient one here in that we have some hoppers. So the whole idea behind this one is that you're going to chuck your smeltable item in top of here. Then you can put your coal or whatever in top of these chests and it'll feed down into the furnaces. And then as soon as the furnaces are done, they'll get put down into these chests down here. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of modular house wall designs. So these are meant to be just kind of like simple wall designs that you can repeat around an entire base. You could make like a whole shape of a base just using these walls and then pretty much just slap a roof onto it and you're done. So the first one here is a more kind of wooden medieval style. This is a simple design that I use in a whole bunch of my bases. You'll probably notice that if you scroll through any of my videos on my channel. A lot of my bases have this simple design. Onto the next design, we have a more kind of dark medieval themed one in that we have some deep slate tiles for the background and then we have some dark oak on the front here. Onto the next one, we have a bit more of a detailed wall design and that we have some textured cobblestone and andesite at the back here. Then at the front, we have this nice archway design and we also have this nice leaf design at the bottom as well. And then even more in front of that, we have this kind of barrel design underneath these stairs, which kind of looks like a supporting pillar. And then up here, we have some arches as well. So this is like a three layer wall. It's pretty crazy. We've got a lot of stuff going on in this one. And then for the final one, we have another medieval kind of vibe. This one's more of like a stone one. It's very similar to the first wooden one over there. Instead, it's a little bit more mellow. We've got obviously more stone around the place instead of wood. We've also got some nice contained leaves back here with some signs across and also some pot plants on top of those as well. Next up, we've got some simple short wall designs. The first one here is more of like a modern kind of gate design, or it could even be medieval. It's up to you, I guess. It kind of goes both ways. But for this one, we've used some invisible item frames here with a stone half slab in there. And then we've got our torch in front of that, which is just like a kind of nice looking torch design, I guess. I don't really like using torches in my builds, but using this design makes it look a little bit more professional, I guess. For the next short wall, we have a wooden one this time. We've got three pillars similar to the other one over there. We've got some fence gates in between those and some upside down stairs with some stripped spruce wood behind those. You could also add in some azaleas on top of here or even some flowers if you wanted it to be a little bit more vibrant. For the next one, we have a bit more of a dark kind of theme. We've also got our similar pillars, except for the middle one this time, we have a slab on top instead of it going like up to the same height as the other ones. And yeah, so this one uses some polished deep slate. We've also got some deep slate bricks as extra kind of details just to keep it looking a little bit more interesting. And now for the final short wall design, we have a natural kind of cliff face design. So this one's obviously not meant for like a base or something. It's meant to be more of like a cliff design or I don't really know how you'd use this one, but yeah, it's just a simple kind of design. We've got like an overhang here with some rooted dirt hanging over and that's all been supported by some stone stairs and stone slabs as well. And then on top of here, we have a custom little oak tree as well. Next up, we have some brewing area designs and similar to the smelting design 
designs that we looked at previously. These ones are meant to obviously be inside of your base. This is just kind of like a showcase that I made. So this first one we'll be looking at is the first aesthetic one, of course. So on the right side here, we have some leaves at the top to add a little bit of greenery. Those are all contained by this trapdoor and we got some signs as well. We've also got our lantern that hangs down in the center with some brewing stands on some shelves. And then we also have a whole bunch of barrels underneath them for some storage. Then on the left wall here, we have a bit of a different design. On the bottom here, we have like a stone kind of table with a water source in the center. I like to do this instead of a cauldron because this actually never runs out and it still looks good as well. And then on the left and right side as well, we have some nether wart growing so that you don't really have to make a whole separate farm. Although if you want more than two to grow at a time, you will of course need a whole separate farm. Now onto the second aesthetic design. This one's a little bit different, of course. So on the right side wall here, we've got some little house plants on the sides. And then we also have like a suspended shelf here with some brewing stands on top of those. Then on the left wall, we have some more barrels along the top for your brewing storage needs. They're all supported on this shelf here, which has a lantern that kind of brightens up the entire area. We've got, of course, more shelves here with some brewing stands and then a little bit of storage down here as well. Next onto the first efficient design, which is also still pretty aesthetically pleasing. But instead of taking up a lot of space with decorations, we've just focused more on storage and brewing and that's pretty much it. So on the right side here, we've got two shelves with a whole bunch of brewing stands. I don't think anyone would ever need this many brewing stands at once, but uh, it looks cool. And then on the left side here, we've got a whole bunch of storage and some barrels and double chests and then a couple more extra little brewing stands as well. And now onto the final brewing design. As you can see, this one is the final efficient one. On the right side wall here, we've got a bunch of chests on the top, all supported by this shelf. Then down below here, we've got another shelf with more brewing stands. And this one's pretty cool. It actually incorporates the little nether wart farm design as well. And down here, we also have our water source too. Then on the left side, we have just more of a simple wall. We have some barrels on the left and right side, and then just some shelves holding up more brewing stands. All right, now for the final four builds of the video, we have a couple of nether portal designs. This first one here being the overgrown kind of cliffside nether portal. So this one obviously is kind of like a chunk taken out of a cliff. It's actually a whole custom cliff that I built myself. So as you can see, we've added like this protruding rock section here that's holding the actual portal itself. We've added a whole bunch of leaves around the place and some vines as well. We've even textured the back of the cliff here using some stone bricks and also some andesite to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then in the front here, we've got our nether portal. It's kind of like hidden away. Like we've tried to hide the sides, I guess. I mean, you can make it look a lot better, but yeah, I guess we tried to like kind of hide it a little bit as if it's actually part of the cliff and we've covered up the front of the portal using some stone slabs and stairs, which makes it look really cool. For the next nether portal, we have this grand desert themed one. So on the left and right side, we have these big towers. I don't know why they have different colored flags on each one. I mean, I'd probably just remove one of them entirely and only have one flag. We've textured these towers using some sandstone and also smooth sandstone. And then on the inside, we've used some strip spruce logs and a whole bunch of other decorating blocks around the place as well. Also a really cool thing that I like doing with my towers to get them not looking as blocky is adding this design on the corners, which is a wall at the bottom and then some fences in between those and then another wall at the top, of course. And yeah, and then obviously, of course, in the center of these two towers here, we have this nether portal design in here. I feel like this would probably look a little bit better having a three wide or even four wide nether portal as the towers are probably a little bit too close in my opinion. But yeah, it's a pretty cool design for like a desert castle or anything like that. For the third nether portal, we have a bit more of a simple one. This time it's more of like a ruined design. This one's as if it was encased in some kind of stone structure and has since crumbled to the ground, but the nether portal inside is still obviously unharmed and is perfectly working. And to get this ruined look, we've just simply added in a whole bunch of stone bricks and andesite. We've used stairs, slabs, and walls as well to just kind of give a nice broken look to it. And now for the final nether portal, this one is very simple. It's uh, meant to be like kind of a standalone portal design that you'd maybe add into like a kingdom or something like that. It's not meant to be too crazy. It's meant to be more of a mellow kind of design, but it still looks really cool in my opinion. On the top here, we've got this weird looking little thing going on. I actually really like the way this looks. It's pretty cool. And I mean, yeah, it's just a pretty simple, cool looking design. All right, and so that pretty much does it for all 31 builds I wanted to showcase in this video. Now, at this point, I have showcased 186 designs in total over my channel. So be sure to check out all of the previous videos in this series. And also, if you're interested, a lot of these builds are available to download over on my Patreon. So if you don't want to recreate them, just go over there. It's a nice way to support me as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.